All right, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about the bike we're going to be showing you today. This is a 2005 Stella. Now, the Stellas are a two-stroke, 150cc, four-speed scooter that is based on the Vespa PX. These were made in India by a company called LML. The sidecar that we have on here is a, was available through Scooter Works, and it was from the manufacturer Cozy in India. Now, this previous owner had adjusted the windscreen on the uh, Stella on the sidecar rig to be at a more aggressive angle because the windscreens on these sidecars are usually very very vertical. Uh, now, really no changes away from the way these would have been. Keep in mind on the sidecar rigs, good item to look out for is these rubber bands in the back. Very frequently you'll see these rubber bands that are the rubber band suspensions. They're usually in really, really bad shape. Um, if you do have one of these sidecars, and it's best to buy new bands for them and then get them, you know, smother them in vegetable oil or anything to keep them supple. That's a really important thing. Uh, this has got a DR kit on the motor um, and it does have an SIP road pipe and that does give it a little bit more power, a little more oomph. You're going to see that there is a steering dampener right here and that steering dampener has been disconnected. We're going to talk about that in the video so you'll have more information about that to follow. And there is the bracket that is on the front fork for mounting the steering damper. I'm going to pull this out so you can take a look at it. That's the bracket. You are going to see that this bike has been fitted with aftermarket by tubo suspension to make the suspension much stiffer. So that's a little bit of what's going on. And then this is the standard steering dampener. This is the type of steering dampener that you would see on a Volkswagen Beetle. So just to make you familiar with what we're working with as we do our video here. Um, the more information on a Stella scooter, we're happy to, you can look it up, but very, very common bike, two stroke, a lot of fun and easy to get parts for. Hey guys, here we are, Cleveland Moto. Now, what I've got for you today is we're going to have a little talk about sidecar rigs, in particular motor scooter sidecar rigs, um, vintage motor scooters or modern uh, metal bodied motor scooters uh, like the Stella, the Vespa, the Bajaj, and we're going to talk about sidecar rigs and what they're like and how they handle and what you can expect if you have one or if you're thinking about getting one. Now I wanted to point out that this particular sidecar rig does have a steering dampener and that steering dampener would go from here, the chassis, the sidecar, over here to this um, ball and socket joint that we've got going right there. And that would keep the front end from wiggling. However, it also keeps the front end from turning. So we're going to talk about that. Just keep in mind that that is a steering dampener and that's what is fitted to this particular bike. Now, scooters and sidecars can be a heck of a lot of fun. The downside is that scooters and sidecars can also be dangerous. So uh, keep in mind, we're going to talk a few things about what as a rider on a scooter with a sidecar you can expect. Um, this is a stock Stella that shows 5,874 miles. However, it is um, it, the motor has been fitted with a DR kit and the DR kit on this bike um, gives it a little more pep. You're also going to notice that you can hear the sound of what is an SIP road pipe. That's a uh, stock configuration exhaust, but it does give the bike just a little more push, a little more oomph. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do to alter a vintage scooter for uh, use with a sidecar. And uh, one of the most important things is to increase the displacement. One of the other things that you're going to want to talk about is we're going to talk about uh, the clutch. So you could go with something like a 20 tooth, a 20 tooth Cosa clutch will give you a better performance because you'll be lowering the primary gearing of the scooter. Whereas a stock 22 tooth clutch or 23 tooth clutch um, would give you give the bike a taller top end speed available, going with a 20 tooth clutch will give you more guts on the bottom. So as we can hear right now, we're only going 35 miles an hour and we're in fourth gear and this bike is not pulling, okay? So we're gonna go down to third and now you can hear we can pull. So that's the first thing that I wanna talk about with the sidecar rig is that you are gonna suffer from a lack of power 
due to this giant weight on the right hand side of the car and also the wind resistance. Now the previous owner on this has taken the, the windshield and sloped it back at a greater angle to make the sidecar a little more wind uh, friendly, cheat the wind a little bit better than it did when it was uh, the stock sidecar windshield was very, very vertical. So any aerodynamic changes you can make might help you. But here we are again, we're 40 miles an hour and as you can hear, this fourth gear is really just a cruise control. It's not pulling. So keep that in mind if you're gonna have a sidecar rig, you're thinking about putting a sidecar rig on your scooter, uh, you may wanna think about can the motor pull it? So this DR kit is a very mild kit. This is pretty much an OEM replacement for the stock top end. And you can hear that, yep, even when I bump it in third gear, get it up to uh, you know 44 or 45 indicated miles per hour, and then drop it into fourth, it really doesn't like to hold that with this very mild, you know, five or 10 mile an hour wind across my nose. So that's something to be aware of, is if you're going to put a sidecar on your bike and you plan on driving it, are you gonna have the uh, gearing to pull it or are you gonna wanna go to a short clutch? Or what are you gonna do to keep the bike in the sweet spot to give you the power that you need to pull the, the rig, and this is, like I said, this sidecar is completely empty. There's nobody in it. So it's just an empty car at the moment. So we are seeing that we are now, as the motor warms up, we are able to pull fourth gear, and we are at 40, an indicated 44 or so, and we're pulling it, but we're not pulling it with any extra authority. We are right dancing on the edge of, you know, it kind of wishes I'd go to third, but at third, we're gonna be essentially um, into the quite high-end RPM range of third. So keep that in mind. You're considering a sidecar. What modifications you're gonna to have to make to the actual bike that's pulling the sidecar to make it be able to go down the roads that you drive on. If you're gonna use it in your trailer park or your you know private community, then maybe you're not gonna need a bike that pulls 45 plus miles per hour. That might not be something you need. But for most people, yeah, you do want to be able to pull that. So we don't have a lot of surplus horsepower to start with. Okay, now, the driving, the mechanics of driving it. So when you set a sidecar up, you're gonna read many books. There's Sidecars by George. There's all kinds of really good books on setting up your sidecar to work with your particular bike. And one of the things to keep in mind is if you're gonna be riding the bike on you know, roads like this, these roads have a very, very mild crown which means the center of the road is higher than the outside of the road. And because of that, you set the sidecars up so that the bike will essentially be sitting upright. If you set the bike up perfectly square, like on a flat parking lot type thing, and your bike, the, the motorcycle part of it, is perfectly straight, when you get it on a crowned road, you're gonna be leaning to the right all the time. Uh, that will wear on you and it will become fatiguing. So there is no solution with a small, with a scooter sidecar. I'm not talking about motorcycle sidecars here. I know that you're gonna to wanna to point out, oh, you can adjust it, it's properly set up car, properly set up rig. Uh, that's great when you've got a 17, an 18, or a 21 inch wheel on the front of your bike. But on these scooters, we literally have a 10 inch wheel and an incredibly steep steering head angle. Now, all that being said, the word twitchy is the understatement of the century. We have to keep in mind that this scooter, this Stella scooter, was never ever meant ever to have a sidecar rig on it at all. Now, this particular bike is fitted with Bitubo Performance Suspension to give it um, a lot better behavior, a lot stiffer suspension, so it's not just a bowl of jello like it would be with factory suspension. Now, what would happen if I let my hands off? People say, oh, you know, I was riding this sidecar rig or I, I decided to borrow a friend's sidecar rig. It was on, set up on a Vespa or a Stella. And oh my God, it was just an instant tank slapper. Yes, absolutely true. Uh, this small wheel in the front is constantly trying to correct, okay? and there is a tremendous drag on the right-hand side of the bike. Not only is it an aerodynamic drag, 
but it's also a mechanical drag because we have a whole extra rolling resistance wheel out there. So we got a whole wheel out there that is pulling on the vehicle. So if I were, now you can see I've got my left hand off the bar and I'm still driving, but I'm only able to do that because I'm keeping a significant amount of pressure on my right hand pushing forward. If I went limp, if I went loosey-goosey on this thing, we would be in the curb almost instantly. And it's one of those things that I have taken a lot of care to set up sidecar rigs. And it is almost impossible on the 10-inch wheeled bikes to get a sidecar where you can hands off and the, bar will, the bike will go straight, even on a flat parking lot. Now that freaks a lot of people out. So what they'll immediately do is they'll immediately resort to items like that steering dampener out there. Now you can see we've got the steering dampener secured and put over in a place where it won't, you know, it's out of our way for this demonstration. So with the steering dampener on, it will control that head shake if you go limp-wristed or if you go loose on the bars. The steering dampener will minimize that. But at what cost? And that's the trick with sidecars. So one of the biggest things about sidecars and being able to use them in an urban situation is they are pretty okay at doing fast transitions from left to right. And uh, in a urban environment, when you're making a lot of lefts and right-hand turns and looking for a parking spot here or there, or pulling in and out of a shopping center or something like that, uh, yes, it is really, really important to have your headset freed up so that it moves easily. Now, here we are, we're going up the hill. You see, we come into that valley, and we lost fourth gear. Fourth gear is unable to pull that hill with this rather stock motor configuration. So we got to drop the three. So we'll hit three, we'll put our speed on and get ourselves over 40. And now in a normal bike, we wouldn't have to be dealing with that. That wouldn't be an issue at all, okay? Get ourselves over 40 and then drop back into fourth gear for like cruise control. All right. So the steering dampener. When the steering dampener on this bike is hooked up, it makes the steering so difficult. It makes the steering pressure required to change directions so high that if you did need to transition from left to right, left lock to right lock, in a hurry, you really can't do it. Yes, it gives you a hell of a lot more stability straight line in a road like this going down the road, but when it comes time to changing direction quickly, the steering dampener literally doesn't let you do it. So keep in mind, if you're going to put a steering dampener on, the ones that are loose enough or sloppy enough to allow you to change directions quickly aren't really doing anything when it comes to straight line stability because that's just the way they work. Remember, what you're asking to do is so, what you're asking this setup to do is so unnatural, so freakishly unnatural that trying to make it work perfectly is a very tall order. Now, we're gonna discuss the sidecar, riding the sidecar, and the correct method for using the sidecar when we get up to a parking lot up here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull into the parking lot behind the church. So when you make a right-hand turn, you actually speed up, you put power on. And you put the power on to make the turn because what you're actually doing is you're driving around the sidecar, okay? I'm gonna go in here real quick. Okay, so when you are operating the sidecar, now we'll I'm gonna take a look now that we're on flat level. See how quickly the head shake comes on? Now the steering dampener would prevent that from happening, okay? The steering dampener would stop that head shake from coming on. But remember, the head shake is just the wheel falling out of direction and then falling back into direction, okay? It's just the gyroscopic forces the wheel trying to right the situation and overcorrect it instantly, instantly. But who drives around without their hands on the bars? By simply having one hand on the bar, even lightly, with my fingertips, I control the head shake. We don't have the head shake anymore. It's gone. So if you're trying to make that head shake go away, you're not going to have any luck at it. Now, on perfectly flat ground... Okay, you're gonna see that with the resistance 
of the sidecar, the bike is going to want to turn to the right. Okay, that's just the rolling resistance of the sidecar. Now you can set the bike up, you can set the sidecar up with a little bit more toe in of the, of the sidecar wheel to make that stop. Now, what do we talk about for changing direction quickly? We're talking about going from a right hand turn, which we're doing right here quite easily, and now we're going to go into a left hand turn. Okay, now if I want to make a really sharp left hand turn, the technique to do it is to actually use my rear brake. Now, this is where we're talking about using the motor, the thrust, and the braking opposite each other to make the bike turn easier, okay? The trick that we talk about here, okay, is slow left. Look at how easily it turns to the left when we go ahead and apply some rear brake. It turns magically. I mean, it's an effortless, it's almost like power steering because when you slow the rear tire of the bike, then what happens is the, mo the sidecar rig wants to drive around it. Now, if I want to turn right, turning right while I'm braking can be more difficult. So the trick is you go to the right. So remember, we go right. Look at how easy this thing turns to the right. I mean, this is effortless. This is just me using the motor to let it coax, it, coax the bike along. How cool is that? Now, if I want to go to the left, I pull the clutch in and I hit the rear brake. And when I hit the rear brake, that pulls the sidecar rig around, okay? And we can do crazily awesome, high maneuverability techniques and tricks. I wanna go slow left, okay? And then go for the right. So by going, hitting the gas a little bit, it just walks me right around these cones. Using the brake, I go right around the cones. So remember, it's slow left, hitting the brake, feeds us right through that cone. Very, very cool. So it really does help you when you're working a sidecar rig to remember. Slow left, go right. So here we are, I'm gonna go around that cone right there, okay? I'm gonna slow before it, then I'm gonna use my motor to go around it. See how easy that was? So we're gonna slow down, first and then we're going to use the motor what we're doing is we're bleeding off speed so we can add it in later okay i'll do that one more time for you so you can understand it i want to make a left hand turn i slow down i hit the rear brake and i drag it in so what am i doing i'm putting a little speed on because i know i'm going to take it off we're going to go through these cones and we're going to make a right i'm going to speed up slow down and then add gas and then adding the gas getting the speed, adding the thrust, spins us around our sidecar rig. Okay, we've all seen videos of people flying the car. All you're doing is you're adding speed in the right, and now you can see the sidecar is up in the air. No big deal. And then we can steer it this way if we have to. Having the sidecar come up the air is not an absolute panic thing. It will get your attention, but you can drive through it simply by, oh, sidecar's up. So we can throw it back down again by adding a little bit of handlebar movement to the left. Now, for a person who's riding a sidecar for the first time and is learning how sidecars work, you may want to put a couple of bags of sand, throw 100 pans of sand in the sidecar rig so it doesn't come up on you. Now, I've been riding sidecars for a long time and having the uh, extra weight in the sidecar isn't necessary for me, but it is something that you may want to do, okay? So as you can see, we're very maneuverable. Sidecar rigs are not maneuverable, not a maneuverability problem, okay? As long as you understand there's times to use the gas and there's times to use the brake. Gas around to the right, no problem. Brake around to the left, okay? And you'll see I'm not pulling the clutch in. I'm just using what motor's available and this little 150cc engine is working just fine to do these parking lot shenanigans, okay? No clutch. All just throttle control. It's, my, it's me using my throttle against my brake to make the sidecar do impossible little turns that you might have a hard time doing if you were on the scooter without the sidecar, okay? We can go right around them. Even with the big sidecar on, we can still get through these cones without hitting anything. Super fun, super easy. Okay, now panic stopping. So when we panic stop, people always overlook the front brake on a sidecar rig. And they really shouldn't. Panic stopping on this bike, okay, 
you got to be able to bury the nose. You've really got to have a good front brake on there because what is going to happen is all this weight on your right hand side is going to pass you. It's going to try its best to pass you. Most of the scooters do not have outboard brakes on the outboard wheel. So when you're going to use a panic stop, always straighten up, get yourself good and straight and heavy into it if you need to. Because remember, you are most likely going to skid that front wheel and that back wheel. Now it's up to you as a good breaker to put yourself in control of the motorcycle so that we don't have a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on about 20 or 30 miles per hour here and then we're gonna have a panic stop. Okay. So as we feed, as we heated up the rear brake, what we do is we add more front brake and we take away rear brake because if the rear brake is skidding, it's not giving us braking force. So once we've braked, broken free on the traction with the back brake, we don't have anything extra there, okay? Same thing, a little faster. So there you see we are able to brake free the front wheel and the rear wheel. So the front brake did eventually work so hard that we lost traction in the front tire, but we were able to get the sidecar down in a respectable short distance. So you're never gonna be able to stop anywhere near as short on a sidecar rig as you're able to stop on a traditional two-wheeled motorcycle. But with training, if you get in the parking lot and you work at it, yeah, that's great. We just stopped from that speed in literally one parking space. We applied the brakes at the first cone and we're stopped by the second cone. That's what you want to do is you want to get into the parking lot with your rig and you want to practice with it and really get the hang of it. Now these transitions, um, we tried this rig with the steering dampener and these transitions playing in this box here, you know, playing in this box was not possible with that steering dampener installed. We just couldn't make these transitions fast enough for this kind of riding. And that's a thing, you know, that's something you really hate to give up. You hate to give up that level of maneuverability just because that steering dampener. Now, as you can see on this particular bike, and we don't have this bike fine-tuned yet, this is a quick setup, but you can see that it's, it's very well-mannered on the road, okay? A little bit of sidecar flying the wheel to get out of that parking lot at that velocity, and it's not dangerous, it's not scary. Okay, but going down this road, we're gonna get the bike up, get up to my 40 miles an hour and shift into fourth gear. So, yes, the bike jumps around, absolutely. The scooter's only a 240 pound bike, and we're adding a very heavy sidecar to it. Now our sidecar at the moment is empty. For your training, it may help you to have some weight in it and help you get accustomed to it. A sidecar build is not terrifically easy. There are a lot of things that you want to be aware of when you're doing it. Where the sidecar bolts onto the bike, don't just use the stuff that comes in the sidecar package. You're going to want to reinforce that because the scooters, you know, we're talking about a Vespa, we're talking about a Stella, we're talking about a Bajaj. These bikes have stamped steel frames. The metal's not exactly thick. So you want to thicken that up and distribute that load of the sidecar over as much surface area as possible. So when we do these, we have brackets that we build that distribute the load of the sidecar more evenly across the entire uh, floor pan of the Vespa. Also, some of the older sidecars from the 70s and 80s will just be a bent steel tube that goes out from the bottom of the uh, scooter floor over to the sidecar rig. And it'll be a very light sidecar fiberglass body. These are called California sidecars. They've been sold by a couple of different companies. Now, here's the trick with those. They do not have this upper bar. So they don't have the bar. And we'll take a look at it down here. So here's the bar. I don't know if you can see it. But that's the bar that gives you the nice triangle of strength. And the bar mounts to the top of the frame under uh, your seat, where your seat actually bolts to the frame. And that bar is adjustable 
it's on a slip joint and you can adjust that to help set up your tilt or your sidecar to bike angle. And that bar gives it tremendous strength and stability, building a triangle of strength hanging off the side of your scooter. Super cool. That's an important thing. So when you're thinking when you're looking at a sidecar setup or you're looking at potentially buying it, if you see one of these old sidecars that simply has a plate that mounts to the bottom of the floor of your Vespa, your Stella, or your Bajaj, um, and only the one pole, kind of a bent three-inch piece of steel or mild steel tubing, if you see that, that may not be what you need. If you're gonna have a heavy passenger, if you're gonna have be putting a lot of miles on it, that isn't giving you any reinforcement. You're just putting all of the stress in that build into the floorboards of your scooter. So keep in mind, you may want to go for one of these Kosi. Okay, so these are, you know, this company that makes this. There's a company called Inder and a company called Kosi that uh, they're both made in India and they both have this look of the old Steib, you know, sidecars. But these companies have been building sidecar rigs for Royal Enfields and uh, Vespa scooters, well, you know, quite obviously bikes that come out of India, like the LML and the Bajaj, for quite a long time. They've got it pretty well figured out. So they're a nice sidecar. They are uh, on the heavy side. Nobody's going to lie to you and tell you how light they are because they don't have a fiberglass body. They actually have a steel body, and it makes them heavy. So keep that in mind. So if you are looking at doing one of these, these sidecar rigs, they do make the bike about as wide as a old Honda Civic. You know, if you're familiar with uh, a sidecar race, you're like, oh, well, they're pretty narrow. Well, they're not actually that narrow. They're quite, quite wide. Um, kind of surprising how wide they are once you start driving one around. The, uh, and you always do kind of want to favor yourself away from the curb. What I can tell you for a fact is if you're riding along and you forget that you have a sidecar on your bike, and you nerf that outboard wheel into the curb, uh, your ride's gonna end very quickly. It's gonna suck you right in real quick and a lot of times you end up upside down. So just, just a tip to keep in mind. The uh, sidecars can be an absolute blast. They really can. Uh, we've tried to help a lot of people learn how to ride their sidecars and how to work with their sidecars and it is a handful. So unless you're an experienced sidecar operator, those tips and tricks that we showed you in the parking lot are gonna be critical to your enjoyment and your experience with the sidecar rig. Here we are, we're running through town here, uh, 25 miles an hour. You can see, I mean, the, bike is, the bike's quite happy. You know, we're not, we're not pushing it too hard, but going down Lake Road there at that indicated 45 miles per hour, I really wouldn't wanna take the bike much faster than that. It's both a how much power does the bike have, but it's also a stability issue. Um, never drive faster than you can make up for if there's a crash. Never drive faster than if somebody runs out in front of you. Can you stop the vehicle? Can you get it going again? You know, can you do the things that you need to do? So this is time for a very quick refresher. So just keep in mind, if you want to make the bike turn left well, drag a little rear brake. It'll turn left beautifully for you. It'll turn left power steering, almost no effort needed. So turning left, little rear brake pulls the bike right around for you. Turning right, if you know you're gonna turn right, it is actually easier to slow down before the right hand turn, okay? Because you know that when you go, when I said slow left, go right. Go right, the motor, I've got power steering again. Turning right right there was super easy. So remember the times when you want to use the motor to turn versus the times when you want to use the brake to turn. Slow left, go right. Now there will be times when you need to accelerate while turning left. It's not impossible at all. But a great technique for that is to start, and this is a good example, start, get it deep in, and then make your slow left. So what we did was we went further out into the intersection there and we went straight deep into the intersection and then I bled off speed using my rear brake, slow left. So even though we were essentially doing something we should have been accelerating to get through that turn, we accelerated first and then we bled our speed off when we needed to, to make the turn. And that's what makes it so much more fun.
okay? Just really, really fun, really cool trick, a neat thing that you can do on the sidecar rig to give you a little more fun and give you uh, a lot more control. And that's a big thing when you're riding these bikes is you've got to have the control. You don't want to be riding the sidecar around and have the sidecar be in charge of your operation and you're not in control of things. That would be the worst thing ever and the easiest way to get into a crash on your sidecar rig. Sidecars and Vespas, sidecars and Stellas, sidecars and Bajaj, yes, it's an extremely attractive thing, right? It's something that we all think is cool and we all dig it, but it can be a handful. Most of the time when people call the shop and they want to do this, I spend a lot of my time essentially trying to talk them out of it. And it's something that you've got to be aware of. You're going to have to change your riding style dramatically. Now, here's the elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. A lot of people who have uh, diminishing physical capabilities, right? We got people that are getting a little older. Oh, look at that. She waved at us. You know why? Because sidecars are cool. Uh, people that are getting older and you're just not as tough as you used to be when it comes to riding around and uh, being in charge of that bike. So you think, well, my answer is going to be, rather than try and hold my heavy bike up, I'm going to switch to a sidecar. Because now that extra wheel and that whole chassis over there is holding the bike upright. Well, that's not exactly easier and it's not it is definitely not easier to hold or to ride a sidecar as you can see based on this video riding a sidecar requires a whole different set of skills and especially in the case of a Vespa Stella or Bajaj with a sidecar rig now we're calling on a whole lot of extra upper body strength to horse this thing around remember we no longer have steening steering by leaning we no longer can steer the bike simply by leaning the bike. We've taken that all away, and now we just have mechanical steering. So this is truly upper body workout. So using a bike, riding a bike like this, and doing it in a proficient manner does require a lot more upper body strength than riding a traditional 150cc scooter. So keep that in mind that riding the sky sidecar rig or the idea of getting a sidecar rig isn't necessarily going to make your riding experience easier. It could be a hell of a lot harder or worst case scenario, it could put you into a situation out of your control pretty quickly and that would end up really, really ruining your riding enjoyment, crashing a sidecar rig. I've seen what happens when sidecars crash. Um, it's ugly. It is not predictable. Things do not go where you think they're going to go. It's not just a traditional low side. When these things go, it's usually because somebody took a turn too hot, took a right hand turn too hot, the sidecar climbed, a sidecar got up in the air, bike went over the double yellow line. And then when the bikes go over the double yellow line, panic ensues, bike gets slammed to the ground, the bike flips. We've seen quite a few sidecar accidents where the sidecar actually goes upside down because you got all that weight, all that inertia, all that mass over there. And of course, especially with the scooter, the scooter is very lightweight and it's very easy for that sidecar to overpower the scooter. So scooters with sidecars, super fun, but can be a handful. So I hope you got something out of this video. Remember, we're at clevelandmoto.com if you have any questions. We always have sidecar rigs around. Uh, we're, we've been putting Vespas and sidecars together for 20 plus years. Um, I always have some kind, of a, some kind of a Vespa, some kind of a scooter with a sidecar on it in my personal stable. And using our left, we're using our rear brake here to make the turn easier. And then once we get the turn straightened out, then we add on the power. And that just makes that turn so easy. Left-hand turns, super easy. So again, give us a call, give us a shout. Cleveland Moto, very easy to find on the internet. No problem there. And always, as we say here at our shop, remember to ride fast and take chances.